season for bowl pomp and circumstance with the Belk Bowl, the little gem out of Charlotte sitting front and center. The wait to compete is over for both Arkansas and Virginia Tech. The game is here, and for some, the last game of their college careers. The Belk Bowl from the Queen City is next. It's the Arkansas Razorbacks from the SEC meeting with the number 22 Virginia Tech Hokies from the ACC. Good afternoon, everybody. That's Justin Fuente, the first-year head coach at Virginia Tech. He won nine games this year, nearly made it 10 as they gave Clemson all it could handle in the ACC championship game. His counterpart, Brett Bielema from Arkansas, now in his fourth season, rebuilding that program. And he's had a 1,000-yard rusher in every season of his 11 years as a head coach, including with the Wisconsin Badgers. Arkansas won the toss. They have deferred until the second half. Adam McFain to kick to Henri Murphy. And we have a very, very windy day. And Lucy takes the ball off of the tee. <laughs> But the wind, it's been swirling. It's left to right as you look at the field now, but it's been swirling. And when the flag carriers for both teams ran out, they were almost knocked down from this wind. So the throw game could be obviously very affected and the kicking game. Arkansas with the wind advantage as we start the game. One of the up men takes the kick. Gets up to the 36 defensive tackle Ricky Walker who made a nice grab on the kickoff and gives the Hokies good field position. Virginia Tech's quarterback first year man Gerard Evans has passed for more than 3,300 yards with 27 touchdowns both school records and he is 81 yards short of breaking Bob Schweikert's Virginia Tech single season rushing record for a quarterback. Circuitous route to get here started at the Air Force Academy and two years of junior college ball is loose. Arkansas had the first shot at it, then a Tech player had a shot. Arkansas saying they had the ball. Sam Rogers coughed it up, and it's Arkansas football. It's a fumble recovered by the defense. First down, Arkansas. That's Brooks Ellis, the leading tackler for Arkansas. I'm not sure he ended up recovering, but he did an excellent job getting to the backfield. This was Sam Rogers, the kind of do-everything athlete coming on a basically a jet sweep and it was not a clean handoff I don't think that Evans got it into the pouch where the where the running back can grab it and he never had the ball and as uh, Ellis does a nice job getting in there a lot of white shirts coming in a huge turnover the last two plays for Virginia Tech on offense an interception against Clemson in the ACC championship and now in the belt ball a fumble two bad plays in a row for Tech in the last two games and they have had major fumble problems this season Allen comes out, wants to throw on first down, has it tipped, and it's incomplete. Tremaine Edmonds got a hand up the starting outside linebacker and got a piece of that throw from Austin Allen. And just a terrible start as the receiver fell down when he came out of his break. The, there was rain last night. It's been a little chilly and windy, and so as Morgan, who's a very crafty receiver, comes out of his break and can't get his footing, a good break for Virginia Tech to maybe catch their breath a little bit. They had that tough loss against Clemson, and all of a sudden they're back in their territory trying to defend. Raleigh Williams, the tailback, turns the corner against Bud Foster's defense and is knocked out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Williams, a 1,326-yard rusher this year. Dan Skipper gets away with a hold here. That was a big-time hold on the edge on Anthony Chicago. Quite uh, frankly, shocked that that was not called. He's Skipper's six foot ten. It's hard to miss when he grabs a guy who's uh, six foot two and throws him around on that edge. You got to throw that penalty. This should be ten yards back for Arkansas, not a game. He is a two-time All SEC first team performer. Nothing doing this time for Cody Walker. 
the young man who desperately wanted to play in this game. This is his sixth year at Arkansas. He has had eight surgeries in his six years. The last one needed a bone graft to fix a broken foot. And Nigel Williams just goes completely unblocked, so I don't care if you have a healthy foot or not. <laughs> You're not going to get much there. And what an unbelievable job for Virginia Tech defensively. Bud Foster, the longtime defensive coordinator that was held, has to be pleased with forcing a field goal after the turnover. Cole Hedlund comes on to try a 38-yard field goal. And Hedlund, who lost his job because of poor performance earlier in the year, knocks that one through, and Arkansas takes advantage of the turnover. Arkansas was 7-5 and five this year. They were 3-5 and five in the SEC. It was really a strange season with wins and losses. They won their first three, then alternated wins and losses the rest of the season. They played seven ranked teams, six from the SEC. They won three of them. Big highlight of the year was Raleigh Williams as a sophomore who led the conference in rushing with over 1,300 yards. The young man coming back after a broken neck last year. And Brett Bielema said this year may have been a little bit of entitlement settling in in their fourth year. Some of the younger guys who had to step up, especially on the offensive line. Boy, they really had some struggles protecting that quarterback and had to go to the run game and sometimes had to go to the throw game when they couldn't quite block. But they seem to have gotten healthier and they should be ready even after a tough loss against Missouri at the end of the season. Murphy lit up as he got to the 15-yard line. This is not a very good start for Virginia Tech. This is one of those bowls that you have to look at which team really wants to be here. Remember, Virginia Tech had Clemson on their heels at, in the ACC championship game, and instead of thinking maybe we're going to go play in the Orange Bowl, now playing against the Belkin, not playing well. Evans, that one wobbles. The catch made by Bucky Hodges. If you're just joining us, Arkansas took advantage of a first play fumble by Virginia Tech and kicked a 38-yard field goal. That's where we stand at 3-0. Gerard Evans in the gun and has Sam Rogers, who fumbled the ball with him. Rogers is Virginia Tech's Swiss Army knife. He does a little bit of everything. Arkansas with a huge pass rush. And Evans didn't get a very good set to throw that ball. And Dre Greenlaw, who has missed six games with an injury coming back to play in this game, was putting the pressure on. We're at Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte for the Belk Bowl. Arkansas against Virginia Tech. I'm Mike Patrick along with Ed Cunningham, Dr. Jerry Punch on the sideline. The wind will be a factor, Ed, gusting mm. to about 20 miles an hour. If you're going the direction Virginia Tech is going, you're throwing into it. Bit of a swirl because this is such a small, compact bowl stadium. Evans with the short set. How about that for closing speed by Ryan Pulley, who has the third most pass breakups this year in the Southeastern Conference. Our first chance to talk with Jerry Punch. Doc? Guys, in pregame warm-ups, Gerard Evans had issues with the win. He was trying to throw simple eight-yard outs. That ball just there just a moment ago blew away. But on the eight-yard outs, the wind was blowing the ball into the ground three yards shy of the receiver. He tried to adjust. The wind got stopped, and he threw it three yards over the receiver's head. And, Jerry, we may be looking at four-down territory here as that ball sails over the head of Cam Phillips. Not sure if Evans' arm got hit there, but that you can see the ball being affected by this wind. We had a game earlier this year, Mike, that was this windy at Michigan State, and uh, it really can affect the ball. Good feet. Eh, it looked like it may have gotten nicked on the way out of the pocket, but now because you're not going to kick a field goal here and a punt does you nothing, four down territory and with a guy like Evans and spread out he could run here pressure coming Evans flushed tries to cut it back in camp good pressure from Jamichael Winston who was the first man to get there had plenty of help Ledbetter was there too and Evans just had to eat it they'll turn it over on downs Arkansas football when we return Back in Charlotte, let's take a look at tonight's keys to the game brought to you by Franklin American Mortgage Company. 
Well, this is uh, two different style offenses, clearly, for Virginia Tech. They run the new school hurry up and can put point points on the board very quickly. So for Arkansas, control the clock when possible. They've had some struggles with their offensive line, especially in the past game protecting Austin Allen. But when they can eat some clock, it'll help. And for Virginia Tech is can they match that effort that they had in the ACC championship game scored 35 points on Clemson interception at the end otherwise that game was getting very interesting and uh, can they match that effort just a different environment here than it was in the ACC championship game. That's plenty of room to put the number. <laughs> At least it's not bitterly cold here. It no, was about uh, 51 degrees this afternoon. I have the feeling the Skipper fan club of one would still go shirtless if it was 25 and sleeting. Could be. That would be my guess. Well, there's a lot to like for that guy. Starting his 47th consecutive game at left tackle, second team All American this year. And Bielema has always had outstanding offensive line. Allen under pressure dumps it off to Whaley. And Whaley, who is a dynamic runner, shows you what he can do into Virginia Tech territory. Chuck Carr had to make the saving stop after a gain of 26. Well, they, they think they, they use the term high ceiling for this young man. Excellent job by Austin Allen by just a second of time to get under there. And Greg Stroman just left flat-footed and a good jump through by Whaley. What a terrific conversion on third down. And again, nice timing by Austin Allen to allow that to develop just another beat before he threw it. Tim Settle was trying to chase him down to 328 pounds. That wasn't going to happen. But Tremaine Edmonds is going to stop this play. Edmonds and his brother Terrell who's wearing number 25 today, the sons of Farrell Edmonds, who was an NFL Pro Bowl tight end. So they have the genes. Mm -hmm. And Tremaine and Terrell are the 23rd set of brothers to play at Virginia Tech. They have such a great history here. And of course, 25 is the retired jersey number of Frank Beamer, who not only was a head coach at Tech, but was a special teams ace and defensive back. And Justin Fuente gives that away each game. Four-man rush to throw to Hatcher wide open over the middle. Hatcher makes the grab. He caught 38 balls during the regular season. And nice job by Arkansas getting a little offensive rhythm going. Well, if you if you go up for the jam, you got to make the jam. And Adonis Alexander didn't make the jam. When you go up in someone's face and you're going to play physical like that, if you whiff against a guy like Hatcher. It, you don't throw off the timing. Great read by Austin Allen to see that there was a whiff on that. Devois Whaley is the tailback in the I formation, and he'll get the delay, and Whaley can't get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and nine. Allen rifles one inside the 10. First and goal. Great effort by Drew Morgan. Not only to make that catch, but to fight for every inch he could get. Well, Brandon Face in the backside cornerback comes in, and instead of going for a tackle, he goes for the blow-up shot, which in college football is now very dangerous. That was not targeting Face and got his helmet to the side. However, you're not wrapping up, and Morgan does an excellent job. You know, the, the biggest problem sometimes when you're going for that blow-up is not... It, it's, of course, it's a safety issue, but you're not doing an effective tackle just by throwing your body in there. Great effort by Morgan. First and goal for Arkansas. Here is the jet sweep. And a touchdown call. Deion Stewart. They needed his speed to run these jet sweeps. They finally got him back. Is the Jets. I'm not sure he got in. And that's Anthony Chagag comes in. Love to see his eyes up on that tackle. I don't think that that is a touchdown. I think that they have to review this. Watch his left foot. He may be out of bounds just inside the one, but I don't believe the ball no, it got sure inside like the it. pylon. But this feels like maybe Allen is a good enough runner moving around a little bit and let him throw it potentially. Well, he's been at his best throwing it down here, but he's going to take it on his own this time. Boy, that sure looked like enough of a surge for him to get in. It did, didn't it? Yeah. And it was. 
That is a call of one of the linesmen. They wait for them to come all the way in, even if it's obvious that the ball is in the end zone by a half yard. Well, it's so hard with all those bodies, though, for it to be, you know, the line judge coming in from 25 yards away, but that looked like enough of a surge to get there. Nine plays, 90 yards. They had four different men carry the ball and four different receivers on that drive. So Allen really spread it around. Headland for the point after. And it's 10 0 Arkansas. McFain will kick it off. And Henry Murphy is deep, waiting at the three. Murphy's averaged over 26 yards of return this year. He'll have a chance here from the six. Nice seam across the 30, still on his feet. Into Arkansas territory. Great return. And the kicker, Adam McFain, whiffed on a tackle, which allowed him to get a 47 yard return on that play. Evan steps up. Floats one down the sideline, and I mean floats, and it's picked off. Ryan Pulley on the return. Pulley chased out of bounds, but not before he got into Virginia Tech territory. That ball thrown up and just hung in the air, and Pulley playing center field snatched it. Yeah, this was as easy as it gets for Pulley. He looked up and that ball was hanging about midway through. He was able to make an adjustment and come and get it. And no trainers have checked on Pulley, so he's okay. I was just a little shocked he would step out of bounds with that many blockers. Arkansas, can they take advantage again? And this is Raleigh Williams, the third. This is going to start to get really dicey for Virginia Tech. Really? Because here's a game that you were two possessions away from maybe beating Clemson in your last game. You come in, you fumble the first play of the game, you throw a really bad pick here going down to try to score, and now you might be down 17 nothing going in just to the second quarter or you know early in the second quarter it's a little bit cold it's very windy how much do these guys really want to keep putting their hand on the ground and playing Allen with time it's a post and wide open for the touchdown Cheyenne O'Grady makes his second catch of the entire season he was about as open as you're ever gonna get And O'Grady taking the spot of Jeremy Sprinkle. If you're just joining us, Sprinkle was suspended for breaking team rules right before the bowl game. And so O'Grady, a redshirt freshman from Fayetteville, Arkansas, gets his second catch. That's kind of a nice one. Touchdown in the bowl game. Terrific receiver. 6'4", 250 pounds in the, the uh, history of great tight ends at uh, Arkansas. The recent history, history of great tight ends continues. Ran a nice post pattern, and Allen put it on the numbers for a touchdown. 17-0 Arkansas. Well, now I know why Ryan Pulley stepped out of bounds. He knew that O'Grady was going to get the touchdown catch. <laughs> <laughs> He'd seen him in practice. Terrific read by Allen. And got it out very quickly. As soon as he saw O'Grady break and that the safety was not over the top to give him some help, to give the linebacker some help, oh, Allen let it go. Good timing. He has hit his last five for 112 yards as Allen. Well, certainly they're not going to be intimidated or afraid of no. anybody, not with the competition no. they face week in and week out. They're down 17 right now. McMillan runs into a wall at the line of scrimmage and then surges forward. And it's worth noting this is a Virginia Tech heavy group of fans here. Only 177 miles from Blacksburg. A lot of Virginia Tech alum live in and around the area. And so uh, they've been sitting on their gloves most of that first quarter. First quarter of the Belk Bowl is in the books, and Brett Bielema likes what he sees. His club is up 17-0 on Virginia Tech. Charlotte, North Carolina, all dressed up for the holidays. And it's 17-0 Arkansas. That Panther doesn't look like he got what he wanted for Christmas. <laughs> the 
Virginia Tech trying to dig out of one of the holes Jerry Punch <laughs> told you about. The improvement in the offense was dramatic this year. They went from 74th in the country to 42nd and 33rd in scoring. But they have to show some of that flash here against an Arkansas team that has shut them down so far. Yeah, this is a pretty important third down, even though we're a couple of seconds into the second quarter. You don't convert this and give up 24. Third and four, a little option look at it. Ouch. That's going to be shy of a first down and a huge hit. Excellent job by Arkansas. This is just a speed option where Evans just sprints out of there. That was the defensive tackle, McTelvin Aguim, who made the all SEC freshman team. Kid can really move, and he's 6'3, 289. Ludwig to punt. Hatcher to return. And Keon Hatcher with a big return up to the 48 yard line. 42 yard kick, but a 23 yard return. This could be a really good offense. They've signed some junior college wide receivers to fill a few spots there. This could be a really good offense for Arkansas next season. Allen quick out to O'Grady. Jerry Punch, you have more on that offensive line. Hey, guys, the Hogs offensive line averages 327 pounds, including right guard uh, Big Johnny Gibson, who's 344. Now, compare that to the Virginia Tech defensive front, which averages 273. You do the math, a 54-pound weight advantage for the Hogs. And Jerry, Brett Bielema told us about one of the incoming offensive linemen. 6'8", 362, said very flexible, can really move. It's hard to imagine a guy 6'8", 362, who would have the flexibility to play anywhere, let alone on the offensive line. Allen, nice fake to Williams, sets his feet, and throws, complete inside the 10. What a play. Perfect throw, and Hatcher held on, even though he was drilled by... Alexander. Well, Allen has shown streaks of being incredibly accurate. And the thing that he didn't get several times this year was really great protection. But now everything going so well for Arkansas, you get the run action pass. And Allen has all day, gets to step into his throw. He's very accurate when he's able to do that. And uh, this Arkansas offense starting to catch a little fire against a very good Virginia Tech defense. Fred Bielema said earlier in the week, if he has a chance to set his feet, He's as good as anybody. Raleigh Williams back in at tailback, and he'll get the carry. Drags a tackler with him down to the seven. Good stop by Trayvon Hill. <laughs> Doc, you have an injury update for us? Yeah, you guys mentioned Froholt, the big offensive lineman that came up. He had injured an ankle in bowl prep, and he re-injured the ankle a little bit ago. He's been examined on the sidelines. And right now, I am told, he is questionable to return. I'll evaluate him again at halftime. All right, thank you, Jerry. And I uh, was wrong about the spot of the ball. It's at the 12, not the 7. Froholt trying to uh, work out on the sideline. Allen throws off his left foot to the 1, inside the 1. Beautiful throw to Hatcher. Allen like a shortstop yeah. off the wrong foot, and he <laughs> rifled this He's thing. having a nice ball game, isn't he? Great job getting his shoulders turned. Uh, it was short. It was short. But yeah. that quick view right there, that was a terrific call. His feet were in the yeah. end zone, but I don't think the ball I don't was. I think the ball was either. From that angle there, it's tough to tell because of the angle back across. After the receiver completed the process of the catch, the ball was beyond the goal line. It's a touchdown. My, well, my diet soda will <laughs> taste so good tonight. I, I still, in my opinion, think that if you put 10 officials in the room and have them vote, I'm not sure all 10 would say that they guarantee that well, the ball broke the play. thank goodness we're not going to do that. <laughs> well, but that you have to get to indisputable. It was. <laughs> <laughs> More importantly, it's... 
getting close to a disaster for, for Virginia yes, Tech. Twenty four nothing. One man's disaster is another man's big game. Yes, though. it is. And Allen is on fire. He's hit his last nine, and this was a brilliant throw. Both teams on Monday visited the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Some of the players had a chance to take laps, care of the Richard Petty Driving School. That'll get your heart rate up just a touch. It is for every player who gets to ride in one of those cars, the experience of a lifetime. Jerry Punch, you know more than your fair share about uh, the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Great experience for the players, uh, for fans, for many years being able to go watch NASCAR races. The fun part about the players going there the other day, one of the big, big defensive tackles wanted to drive in the race car. He's 340 pounds. They had to wedge him through the window. <laughs> they weren't sure they were going to be able to get him out for the game, but they managed to do it. <laughs> jaws of life, Jerry. They would have they'd had to go to the jaws of life. Short kick taken by one of the up men across the 40. They'll mark it at the 43, and they're getting a little chippy. Now for Gerard Evans and the Hokies offense, not much room for error. Before, they were getting the ball with about 250 left and two timeouts, and now 46 seconds and no timeouts. You can still work the middle of the field you don't have to go out of bounds because in college football if it's beyond the yardage to gain a first down the clock does stop all the chains are moved Tough you have first to, half for Chirot yeah, Evans but you've got to be very careful with any any play that's going to kill 10 or 15 seconds getting the next one off Evans pump fake goes on the slant nice catch by Sam Rogers who is going to make somebody's NFL roster as a, a Swiss Army knife because there is nothing he can't do. Evans keeping it alive. Good job. Buys some balance. time. Yes, sir. Stops the clock with 28 seconds left. Well, you're getting into territory where you can start pushing it down the field maybe a little bit. I think you'd want to get with this win near the you know get it over the 50 maybe to the uh, plus 40 before you'd want to start throwing one to the end zone at the end of the half. Evans again under pressure rifles that one intended for Hodges but Jared Collins was right there defensively and that's a big size uh, mismatch 5'11". Bucky Hodges at 6-7. Excellent break on the ball by Collins. Well, you don't have anybody that can cover him <laughs> when you split him out as a yeah. wide receiver at 6-7. That was pretty good by Collins, though. Oh, absolutely. But if you want to throw it up for grabs, he's the one who's likely to get it. Evans, contact to the flag. Unfortunately for Virginia Tech, that is not a spot foul. Yeah, but you still you're going to get you pick up 15 and, and that gets you closer to where you can start throwing it to the end zone and you may get if you want two shots towards the end zone. The yeah well that, that was spot yeah. Liddell. He, he just and that was a good job by Ford as he started to adjust his body Liddell could not see he was coming back. Yes. Not, a, not a bad play by Liddell just didn't quite see the ball but a good adjustment by Ford. As the ball was sort of bent to the inside and that, that's a big 15 yards because of this wind. Now Evans can comfortably get the ball into the end zone. I'm not saying you do it right here but you're down to maybe two plays. So you got to be careful with what you do here on the first one. Ford with only one catch tonight holds all those school records. Ah! Evans underneath got this one to Phillips down at the 30 that will stop the clock with six seconds to go and they'll get the ball killed. So it stops with five and now you've got a decision do you try the field goal and it looks like they will they'll have what win there is right now at their back for Joey Sly who was a really good and, kicker and 21 points 
Down 21. That's a little different feeling going into halftime. It really is. It's three scores, and there's the guy who blocks the kicks, the 6'10 offensive lineman. He has had seven career blocks. This would be a season-long kick for Sly. And the kick is wide. That is a microcosm of what's happened to Virginia Tech in this first half. Sly has made 20 of 26 field goals. And the coach has named him the ACC's best. Comes up and misses a 48-yard try. What a difficult half for Virginia Tech. Let's go to Jerry Punch with Brett Bielema. Coach, impressive 24 points in the first half. How would you describe the play of Austin Allen, your offense? Well, yeah, obviously, guys put in good prep. My daughter guy's getting ready to play, but uh, we've learned this year you got to play a four-quarter game. So we'll go in here and we'll have a whole hearty talk about we got the ball coming out in the second half. Obviously, wins a factor in this game. You got a very explosive offense over there. We got to play good football. Shut out here in the first half of your defense. What's the key? Well, we got to play well. Their quarterback, very dangerous player. You saw him on the long run. Uh, we got to keep him bottled up. Can't give the long ball throw, obviously, right before the half over there as well. We'll play a four-quarter game, I guarantee it. Hey, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Coach. When we come back, Reese Davis and Joey Galloway will have the Buick halftime report from Phoenix after these messages. Welcome back to the Belk Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. We're in Charlotte, North Carolina, Bank of America Stadium, home of the Belk Bowl, and it has been all Arkansas. They have dominated number 22 Virginia Tech in this game, 24-0, and they have taken no prisoners. It has been really impressive, and Austin Allen, who's had an up-and-down season because he hadn't been protected very well in some ball games has been protected really well, and he has been incredibly accurate. They haven't gotten much running game going, even though they have Raleigh Williams, the SEC's leading rusher, during the regular season. But Allen has gotten a lot done as he's moved. He's thrown the ball really well as he's run. And defensively, a defensive line that was like the offensive line for Arkansas up and down all year. They have made Gerard Evans' life miserable tonight. Give the secondary a ton of credit for Arkansas. Much of this pressure coming after the first read was not open for Evans. And Evans having an incredibly frustrating night against a very active front for Arkansas. And to cap it off, Arkansas will get the ball to start the second half. Joey Sly, one of the best kickoff men in the entire country, knocks it out of the end zone. And moments ago, Doc Punch with Coach Fuente. Coach, several times, Notre Dame, Clemson, you guys have had to come from behind this year. What's the key to getting back in this one in the second half? Uh, one play at a time. I mean, you can't score more than six points on any given touchdown. you got to get stops. we got to play better. And, you know, Arkansas is a good football team. They've got good players, but we just got to take it one play at a time. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Austin Allen with a brilliant first half for Arkansas. Leads out his club. They'll start from the 25. Can this Virginia Tech defense get some stops? That pass could have been a backwards pass, but it's recovered by Drew Morgan. Jerry Punch, what do you have? Hey, hey guys, uh, Justin Fuente in the locker room at halftime, I'm told that he basically told his team, hey, we haven't played well in any phase of the game tonight. Offense, defense, special teams, but that half is gone. It's over. we got to forget about that. Guys, we haven't played well. We got to come out and play hokey football. But basically, his message was forget about what has just happened. Let's play a second half. All right, let's see if uh, the message takes hold and if they can dig themselves out of this hole that they have created against Arkansas. As Austin Allen gets sacked.
throws to Morgan, made the catch, but he lost the ball. And Virginia Tech has it. That's exactly what the Hokies needed. Ball is out. Excellent job there by number 24, Anthony Shagag. Clearly, he stripped it before yeah. Morgan went down. The kind of break that Hokie defense needed to make, and now the offense has to take advantage of it. Woody Barron is the guy who got credit for the recovery. And this is a big reminder that Arkansas has had huge struggles in the second half, and Virginia Tech has been very good. In the Isaiah second. Ford, their leading receiver, makes only his second catch of the ball game. That was a good throw by Gerard Evans. Well, a nice turnover forced by Chagat gets a little energy back for this group, and energy for a, a, a crowd that was very pro Virginia Tech. Several folks seem to have maybe left a little early. It's hard to blame them down 24 nothing, but they might see another run by the Hokies in the second half. Or they might miss it now that they're gone. McMillan is in as the tailback. They fake it to him. Throw to Ford on the other side. And Ford has another first down. He's pushed out near the five. Ford, a guy who has uh, declined uh, talking about whether he'll turn pro after this year's junior year. The all-time leading receiver at Virginia Tech. Seems like he's got a little something working now. Quarterback keeper. Touchdown. Just like that, Gerard Evans, two complete passes, and then a quarterback keeper, and the Hokies are on the board. Evans, a big guy at almost 240 pounds, clearly gets the ball across the goal line, and Virginia Tech now all of a sudden with a little life after what was a disastrous first half. Joey Sly on for the point after he's hit 53 of 54 this year. True on that one. So the one thing Virginia Tech desperately needed, the defense provided the strip, fumble, and the recovery. The turnover leads to that touchdown. Welcome back to the Belt Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Well, I have to clean up that rule even a little bit more of, of that muff punt because it's still very confusing to me as I've read and talked to the officials. What happens on that punt at the end of the half, because that inadvertent whistle, the, the punt never changed possession because the holding was at the line of scrimmage. So therefore, they had to go back to the line of scrimmage to adjudicate that. If there hadn't been an inadvertent whistle, then it would have been immediate action ball given to Virginia Tech. It's crazy. I'm still not sure I fully understand it. However, in talking to the replay officials and looking at the rule book, they got it right. Okay. Allen changes course, has a convoy of blockers, and stayed in bounds long enough to pick up significant yardage. Did he get to the chains? No, I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong one. He's short. <laughs> well, he got to the chains. He, he got just to didn't the get first to the end one. That's it. right. <laughs> well, here's a big down for Arkansas. And, you know, we've been showing all day. Dr. Punch reported about how bad they've been in the second half all season long, especially in that season-ending loss to Missouri. Uh, here's a time you need to put up. Virginia Tech showing blitz, but they don't come. Allen on the run, throws, ball is tipped and intercepted. Picked off by Anthony Chagag. Chagag is in there as a dime coverback, which means he gets the tight end a lot. And how about that? Austin Allen gets drilled as he throws it by the middle linebacker, Matua Puwaku. Puwaka, excuse me. 
And what an excellent read by Chicago, who's had himself a really nice game. He's been active around the line of scrimmage, good in coverage. And all of a sudden, the Hokie defense, two turnovers, could have been three if they hadn't have had the penalty on that Morgan fumble through the end zone. And uh, looks like that punt decision last time they had the ball worked out okay. And he cut in front of the tight end, Cheyenne O'Grady, to make the pick. So Virginia Tech sets up at the Arkansas 44 with 6.28 to go third quarter. Little option look. Rogers gets to the outside, out of bounds to 42. Virginia Tech looks like a whole different club. Don't right they? Now. Yeah, everyone's got a little pop in their step, a little belief in what they're doing. It helps when your defense starts making some plays for you, giving you the ball back. You punch one in, and all of a sudden you're down 10. This is a pretty good ball game. Evans. Well, he doesn't have a whole lot of time. No. Michael Winston got him. When you go with the pump fake, if you can't throw it right away after that, if you have to sit and wait, somebody's going to be on you. And this is just unbelievably good coverage by Ryan Pulley. Pulley's played a terrific game. They've been trying out Ford on the other side against Jared Collins and having some success, but they're not having much success against Pulley, who had a big interception in the first half. I think Pulley has said, you can throw a few of those hitches if you want, but you're not going to get me deep. Now I do think if you get some yardage here, you would uh, be thinking about it on fourth down. Evans dumps it over the middle, and they've got a first down and more. Cam Phillips inside the 15 first down. Hokies, a gain of 33. Santos Ramirez had a chance to hold it to a short gain, and he missed him. Good job by the offensive line that time. Took a long time for Phillips to come across the formation. Terrific throw by Evans as well. Evans gives it to Phillips on the flanker sweep. Evans has real nice touch on the ball. You, I've seen this a couple times where he takes a little bit off it, just put it right on the ribs. And an excellent job by Phillips with a stiff arm. Phillips very dynamic with the ball in his hands. You can see why they're trying to get him the ball a bunch of different ways. They can get a first down at the one. McMillan back in at tailback. Rodgers goes on a wing and now goes in motion. And around Ford. And a great defensive play oh, by man. Brooks Ellis. And now he's going to be called with a penalty for dragging him down by the back of the jersey. Ellis diagnosed that play beautifully and then makes <laughs> a mistake at the end. Ford got the pitch and 51 was just standing there waiting for him. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, defense, number 51. Half the distance to the goal from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Ah, what a bummer. What a tough break for Ellis. Had him dead to rights. Two-time academic All-American. And the reason that rule is Good in is, up. yeah, the reason that rule is in is because you always see the defensive guy falling on the back of the legs right there. It almost always catches an ankle, so they've made that illegal and just a bummer for Ellis. Obviously not trying to do that and had played the ball perfectly. Ellis, the SEC Scholar Athlete of the Year. Rodgers, what a catch! A circus catch by Sam Rogers as Evans got it a little too far outside, but watch this. But he One threw, hand. He threw it softly, Mike, and I've seen that a couple of times. Evans just has a really good touch on the ball. If you fire that in there off target, there's no way the guy makes that catch. So, and he threw it to the right guy, yeah, too. Yeah, he's a, he's a gamer with good hands, but when you take something off the ball, Receivers call it throw me a catchable ball that usually means take a little something off it And he sure did there so give Evans even though he's off target a little credit Sly for the point after 
And on both scores here in the second, second half, it's been Virginia Tech's defense that set it up, this time an interception, and then the offense took advantage as Gerard Evans and company have come alive in the second half. Still like Alabama over anybody, though. Yeah. They look like uh, clear number one. Virginia Tech really turning this into a ball game. Drew Morgan on the return. Gets to the 16. Allen with a play fake. Dumps it underneath. It's intercepted. It went through the hands of Austin Cantrell right to Tremaine Edmonds. Holy cow. If you're just joining us, Virginia Tech was getting blown out of the building in the first half. They were down 24-0, and it didn't even look that close. And all of a sudden, the Bud Foster defense, which if you've followed Virginia Tech for any length of time, you know this is something they do well. Arkansas has turned it over three times in 11 snaps. Evans for the end zone. Touchdown! Chris Cunningham, the tight end, the red shirt freshman. And another tough catch in the end zone. Remember what Jerry Punch told you. Arkansas has struggled mightily in the second half. They haven't been able to score. They haven't been able to stop the other guys. It's happening again. Well, they're down 21 nothing in this half. Or 20 nothing now, pending the point after touchdown. Brett Bielema has seen this all too often in 2016. Sly for the point after. And what was a blowout has become a three-point game. The last six drives for Arkansas. A hundred yards and three turnovers. It's just come apart on offense. And Allen had been so brilliant in the first half. And they'll take a knee and start from the 25. And the Virginia Tech fans here are really pumped. And if you're Allen, can you get this out of your mind? Well, they've just turned it over, turned it over, and turned it over. Well, now the problem for Arkansas, they haven't been able to get anything going offensively. The only thing they had going in the first half was Allen throwing the ball. So if you want to get to your foot back on the gas, I think you have to trust Allen. I think you have to call some drop back passes. That, that was the only, that was how they were moving the ball in the first half. And it feels scary, but I do think you have to give this guy a try. Boy, a tale of two halves for Allen. Nothing went wrong in the first half. Nothing's gone right in the second half. Draw play. That'll pick up about five for Whaley. Chuck Clark, the safety, made the stop. Well, the problem for Arkansas now, too, is they're going to start seeing some different looks. Virginia Tech feeling a little more confident, a little more comfortable, getting in the groove of the game. And because Brett Bielema has the team has not been able to get much of a run game going, I think it's going to have to go. This offense is going to have to go through the arm of Allen if they're to get back on track. Out of the eye this time. Whaley again. Upend it. Chuck Clark stuck him and knocked him rear end over teacups. And Clark's the guy who gets up a little yeah. slowly. I think he may have caught a knee as he went down low. On the Out of the eye this time. Whaley again. Oh, holy cow. Jeez. And it was Clark who came off a little worse for the wear. He's still on the field. Not... Let's see where uh, maybe that shoulder took a pop. They need to reach the 35 to keep the drive going.
three-man rush. No pressure at all. And some catch by Hatcher for a first down at the 40. That kept it alive. An exceptional catch. Hatcher having himself a terrific game. Senior out of uh, oh. Oklahoma. Five for 92 tonight. None bigger than that one, Ed. Yeah, that was a third down that you don't get that, and the roof blows off this place. Yes. And I, I think Virginia Tech probably goes down and goes up 27 24. Clock running again, 2 11 and counting, third quarter. Fake to Whaley, dump it off to Hatcher. He's hit hard and struggles to get extra yardage. Good hard run by Hatcher will get him five yards. Hatcher, a big guy, 6'2, almost 210 pounds. Coaches talk about. Has a good feel for how to use his size. That time he had to use it to put the hammer down like a running back and pick up a couple extra yards. Second and 11. Pokey defensive lineman jumping around. Allen got out of trouble. Not done yet and forced out of bounds. Good hustle there by Woody Barron to finish it off. Terrific coverage on the back end by Virginia Tech. Three or four times Allen was able to square and look downfield and there was nobody, nobody open. Watch how many times Allen has to look down the field and you mentioned the confusion of the defensive line. They weren't able to get much pressure. But every time Allen looked up, Everybody's matched up. There's nowhere to go. They'll come with a blitz. Allen under pressure. Throws sideline incomplete. Holding. Offense. Number 70. His penalty is declined. It's fourth down. Dan Skipper, the all-SEC left tackle, and then limping off is Trayvon Hill. Virginia Tech already missing Vinny Mahota, who wasn't able to play today because of a shoulder at defensive end, and Hill, one of the freshman young players that they are extremely excited about. He's had a couple of rips off the end. And here goes Arkansas. They're already down 21-0 here in the second half. They're trying to make it more. Baker to punt to Phillips. Not a good kick this time, but got a good bounce inside the 25 yard line before it goes out of bounds. 41 yard punt net. Evans with a perfect strike to his tight end slash wide receiver hits him in stride and Evans really having a good second half. Yeah, he's starting to feel a little bit of a rhythm in that first half. The sacks weren't coming uh, because of just guys running free. The sacks were coming because not a lot of guys were open on his first and second read. And that has not been the case here in the second half. The Hokie fans are on their feet here at the Belk Bowl in Charlotte. Their team, left for dead, has come back to within a field goal. Beautiful city of Charlotte, North Carolina. We're at Bank of America Stadium, the home of the Belk Bowl. If you watched the first half and then went somewhere and came back, surprise. <laughs> now 24-21, the biggest deficit that Virginia Tech has been able to overcome this year. 17 points. That was against Notre Dame. They are trying to break that here tonight. And Isaiah Ford makes another catch, his fifth. And Gerard Evans, who's had some big games this year, trying to have an enormous second half. And Ford, a little gimpy, their top receiver. That guy who, if he does decide to come out in the NFL, probably a second round pick is what he is being projected. And he's had a nice second half as they started him a bunch. Evans getting rid of everything in a hurry, and Bucky Hodges couldn't drag that one back. Evans had not thrown an incomplete pass until then in the second half. And he struggled so much in the first yep. half. 
He got some help. Sam Rogers made a beautiful one-handed catch yep. for a touchdown. Chris so Cunningham. Cunningham. Yep. Well, with a name like Cunningham, he knew he'd make <laughs> a great play. And there's Ford getting that uh, ankle taped on the outside of his shoe. Run it with McMillan. Pick up about four, so it'll be third and six. Brooks Ellis, the SEC Scholar Athlete of the Year, two-time academic All-American, made the stop. Of course, Ellis was the guy who got that tough on third down and goal, made a great stop on the reverse, and got called for the horse collar tackle that gave Virginia Tech another chance and a touchdown. So trying to make up for that mistake. An honest one. Rodgers is in the slot to the near side. Evans looking that way. Now Evans takes off. And puts his head down and dives for the first down. Gritty play by Gerard Evans. And a huge play. Otherwise, you're, you're probably putting that ball away if you're Virginia Tech because you've got momentum even though you're at midfield. And Evans, who is... A gifted runner, a big man. He is That's, a big dude, yeah. 238 pounds. Yeah, he's a big guy, and he, he's got a really nice throwing motion. I really, the, the the pocket passing has really improved over the year. Remember, this is just his first year of major college ball. Evans on the slant to Hodges. That one right through his hands. He's covered well by Collins, but the ball was there. Would have been a tough, tough catch. And how different does this Hokie offense look than it has in the past? Uh, it's oh, it's, just, yeah, it's just totally no, no a, a, comparison yeah, whatsoever. Difference. Rob Smith, the defensive coordinator for Arkansas, he had been in the NFL for a few years, but he was at Rutgers before. He said he put in the Virginia Tech tape. They said, I didn't even recognize them from four years ago when I left. Used to be I formation runs, and now they're a spread throw it around the field, run the quarterback. It's just a whole different feel and vibe for this uh, for this school. Evans on a keeper. Caps made the tackle. Another big third down. Never seen a back carry out a fake handoff <laughs> before they called the play. Well, they, you want to see the defense, what they're going to give you. Evans throwing for the first down, and that's Ford back in the game after having his ankle retaped. And a nice job by Ford. That ball was thrown a little low and went down to make sure that he secured the catch. You know, sometimes you want the receiver to put his hands down and not fall down to catch that. But in the end zone or for a first down, make the body catch, make sure you get it. Getting very close to a chip shot field goal try for Slive if you can get another first down or so. McMillan breaks a tackle. Still on his feet. To the five. Drew Greenlaw had him dead to rights, and he went right through him. Greenlaw, Greenlaw has missed six games yep. with a foot injury, so he's got to be rusty, but that's a play he normally makes easily. McMillan again. Shakes the tackle. Touchdown. Are you kidding? It's almost hard to explain how rough a year Arkansas has had in the second half. It, it's really, it's, it's shocking. And we've showed the point differential. But it Which was, is getting worse. But it, <laughs> quickly. But it was 24 to nothing at halftime. And all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah. And Virginia Tech didn't even need a turnover that time. Now, can you imagine the Arkansas fans who left at halftime with them up 24 <laughs> nothing and then saying, what well, the score was what? Well, how about the Virginia Tech fans who left early? Back after this. Welcome back to Charlotte. An amazing comeback by Virginia Tech. They're up 28-24.
And how do you explain the unexplainable? In the first half this year, Arkansas has had a 63-point advantage. In the second half, they have had a 90-point disadvantage. You, there's no way to come up with a reason for that, is there? No. And Taiwan Johnson doing his very best to implore the troops to give a little better, but they have the 1,000-yard stare going on. Brett Bielema during that timeout was just standing over here on the sideline completely by himself, not talking to anyone. I think this is a shock to them. Pressure coming on Allen. He just threw it into the ground. No signal yet. But that looked for all the world like intentional grounding, and it will be. Mook Reynolds was coming from his linebacker spot. There wasn't anybody out there to block him. Mook has had himself a, a heck of a game. Holy cow. Talk about a dynamic player. You can see Bud Foster. Rounding. Offense number eight. Although he was out of the pocket, the ball did not go to the back to the line of scrimmage. There was no receiver in the area. Loss of down at the spot of the pass. It's such it's a, a huge down. penalty because it is yards and yep. down. And Mook Reynolds, one of the, you know, you talk about using athletic guys in different positions on offense. Reynolds, a guy who clearly Bud Foster feels comfortable out covering people around the line of scrimmage. That's the second sack we've seen uh, coming from that position. Of course, he also had an interception that led to a touchdown earlier as well. It's a 183 pound guy on the blitz and getting it done. Arkansas running out of space to operate. Underneath to Cantrell. He gets to about the nine. Matua Puwaku made a really nice adjustment in the open field. He was going up against a, a taller guy, and he slowed down because you, if you go in too fast, you might get the stiff arm. That was a really athletic play by Matua Puwaku. Third and a mile deep in your own territory. Intercepted. Now the ball comes loose and Virginia Tech got him back anyway. Intercepted by Terrell Edmonds wearing Frank Beamer's 25 jersey. Everybody at Virginia Tech has said whoever gets that 25 jersey turns it up a notch. When we saw Terrell Edmonds, he was almost ejected for targeting. It was properly pulled off, and Edmonds gets in the line of guys. Greg Stroman, when he wore it as a punt returner, had a punt return touchdown. The last game of the regular season, Sam Rogers, the running back against UVA, rushed for over 100 yards in that game. And now Edmonds, with the magic of Frank Beamer on his back, gets another pokey turnover. Is that four turnovers here? Four in the last 23 snaps. Holy cow. Things are coming apart at the seams. And the Arkansas defense just stunned. Able to push Evans out of bounds inside the two. It is mind-blowing how poorly Arkansas has played at times in the second half this year against a team, Missouri, that they were frankly better than, even though they were struggling running the ball in the second half. They scored zero points, and they scored zero points here in the second half against Virginia Tech, and now given up an unbelievable 34 points in one half. Gerard Evans straight up the middle, and Ed, I can't even guess why you would play so poorly in the second half compared to the first half. Well, competition had something to do with it in the SEC West, but they it just doesn't look like the same team that we saw in the first half. Don't take away from Virginia Tech, though, because they no. made some plays defensively. Chagag has had a huge night, and the defensive line started getting active, so don't want to take too much away from the team that punched him in the mouth because they did the punching. And it's really appropriate, I think, that Bud Foster's defense was the thing that turned it around. My, oh, my. And as bad as Arkansas has been in the second half this year, Virginia Tech has been very good. Came back from 17 against Notre Dame to win at Notre Dame. Came back from 21 down against Clemson in the second half and almost 
push that game into overtime in the ACC championship game. Allen under pressure. And cut down at the 32. Guess who? Mook Reynolds made some big, big plays. Ed is a player. Just to go into the locker room down 24 0 and not playing an arch rival in that kind of emotional setting to tell yourself, yeah, we can win. We can yeah, we can turn big. around and come from behind. You gotta be kidding. No, they're they're, they're Justin Fuente has some magic, I think. And you can tell the way that the players talk about him, how much they like and respect Fuente, because you're right, Mike, this is a a bowl game that, you know, in the grand scheme of things, what does it really matter? You're down 24 nothing. It's kind of cold. You've been working all season. Everybody wants to get home. But they didn't and give the entire staff. But Foster got his group obviously ready to go on the defensive side. But you're right. This is uh, pretty impressive what the Hokies have done. That last snap bounced back to Reynolds. Actually more of a roll than a bounce. And uh, back to Allen. He makes the throw and it's incomplete. It's Frank Rag now who is projected as an NFL center. Decided as a junior though that he will come back next year. And it's coming again. Pass that looked like it was out of bounds and it was. You know, Bud Foster is a guy who I'm from the state of Virginia. And uh, I have known him since they were first hired at Virginia Tech. He is one of the best guys in the business. And he said, where, in what world, in what job could you live in the same town for 30 years and do the same job? And he, he's been able to raise his family. He's got two grandkids. He lives 35 minutes outside of Blacksburg on a little tiny lake that he says that 35 minute drive is how I <laughs> decompress. And, uh, he had plenty of offers when Frank Beamer, when, when the transition was happening and, and people knew that Bud Foster was not going to get the job as the head coach, as we listen to the call. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, flagrant unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 80, by rule number 80 is disqualified from the game. Wow. 15-yard penalty is enforced. It'll be fourth down. Wow. After the play, Drew Morgan must have... Well, I, I, we, we don't I don't want to speculate, but to be he, he, uh, that bad to be tossed out, he, he must have thrown a punch. There, there had to have been something really egregious for Morgan to get yeah. kicked out. And unfortunately for Morgan, he gets the cop walk because because you do have to leave the field of play when you're ejected. Can't stay on the field. What a tough way to end your senior year. Oh, no kidding. And here comes the blitz, and they got him again. My goodness. Coming off the corner, Anthony Chagog. Boy, that whip outside <laughs> linebacker spot has really done it. Yeah, Chagog and Reynolds, who play essentially the same spot. They've been on the field a lot because of all the throws from Arkansas. And both of these young men, Chagog, a junior, Reynolds, a sophomore, they're and pretty Bud, dynamic guys. Bud Foster is just letting them all, letting the hounds <laughs> yeah. loose. Yeah, you... You can open up the playbook a bit when things start going. The sixth Virginia Tech half sack in this half. Six. Well, that's only two more turnovers than the turnovers they have. So. Second half has just been brutal. Fair catch made it. It's unbelievable the difference with Arkansas in that first half and the second half. Making sure he stays in bounds is Bucky Hodges. You got to hand it to Justin Fuente. This will be if they hang on his 10th victory of the year in his inaugural season. He's already the consensus ACC coach of the year. This is quite a way to cap it off. And he's a guy who's from a small town in Oklahoma. He was having a great time coaching at Memphis. He would not have taken a job if it had not been a place that had the opportunity to play for national championships and compete year in and year out for conference championships. And he also wanted to live in a small town. He's a guy from a small town. His wife is from a small town. They have three young daughters. He said, if it wouldn't have been Virginia Tech, if it wouldn't have been a place like that, I never would have, I, I wouldn't have left Memphis 
for a job that wasn't like this. And, of course, it was made a big-time job by his predecessor in Frank Yes, Beamer. it was. And Blacksburg certainly uh, fits an idyllic small-town setting. Absolutely. And I still get my diet soda, don't I? <laughs> that was the bet on the touchdown. Yes, it was. That pass caught nice by job Bucky by Hodges. And Hodges did a nice job of stretching it beyond the first down, the, the yardage to gain for first down. If he didn't stretch his uh, arm out, I'm not sure he'd have gotten the first down. Young man who has already graduated has not made up his mind whether he'll go to the NFL or come back for his senior year. He does have one more year of eligibility remaining. Well, you also have a quarterback who can throw it a little bit. That yes, kind of you helps do. your <laughs> decision. Might influence yeah. what you uh, decide to do. Pick up about eight yards here, and Evans just such a dynamic guy. Fans tune into ESPN3 for the post-game trophy ceremony presented by Capital One. That's immediately following this game. That's on ESPN3. I wouldn't want to play poker against Justin Fuente. Have you seen a different face no, today from him? Been the same the whole time. <laughs> Evans needs six yards to set the all-time quarterback single-season rushing record held by Bob Schweikert. Bob didn't get 14 games to do it in, though. I got to no. stick up for the guys who don't get uh, to keep their records who played 11 games. Very total. true. Yeah. Trayvon McMillan with a nice spin move. I, this ball game is over. I, the Virginia Tech's going to run this off and walk away with a trophy. I think Arkansas's packed it in. I think this defensive line that's had some struggles is just they're not getting off blocks anymore. And I think this clock is going to tick away. It's a nice piece of hardware. Yes, isn't it? it is. And Fuente in his first year will get 10 wins. And if you are a Tech fan, you have to be so thrilled with what happened. If you're going to have a, a big smile on your face for what's going to be happening there. You know, and I think it's worth putting in context. I mentioned I'm from the state of Virginia, and I don't think anybody really remembers when Frank Beamer took over at Virginia Tech. The school was whacked with pretty bad probation. Yes. There had been some cheating from the previous administration. And when Frank Beamer and his staff came in, Virginia Tech was playing a blend of, at the time, it was one double A, which is now FCS, and power conferences, schools. And they upgraded the schedule, and they were on probation. There were some lean years there. But what Beamer built at Virginia Tech for people in the state and around the area is just mind-blowing. Well, they did get two of my classmates. The, the, the Bud Foster made a good friendship with my high school coach, Bruce Patrick, who was running a really top program at the time. He's a Hall of Fame coach, Fairfax County, and Bud made a nice relationship with him, was able to get some players out of our high school. And I, I can't say enough of what a nice guy he is, what good relationships he's built, and his players just love and absolutely respect yeah, him. For sure. Offensive lineman's favorite play. <laughs> of the game, the victory formation. A comeback for the ages, no doubt about that. Down 24 nothing, and then you win 35 to 24. And as we said before, these are stories yeah. they'll be able to tell their grandkids about. Well, and, and what is the narrative for Arkansas? This was a year, I think, coming in where people were hopeful as Justin Fuente gets his uh, Gatorade bath. But for Brett Bielema, going into the offseason, year number five coming up, has not beaten Alabama, has talked a little bit about maybe changing structure on defense to a 3-4. Arkansas should be explosive next year on offense. But I think for Brett Bielema, a lot more questions going into the offseason uh, than answers. This will be win number 10 for Virginia Tech. Arkansas will fall to seven and six with that brutal schedule that anybody in the SEC West plays. Definitely want to get all the ice out. It's okay if you're a little wet, but there's a piece of ice back there. That'll bother you. That'll do it.
quiet performance by Virginia Tech on both sides of the ball being down 24 nothing. A lot of people could have mailed it in after that but they did not. Don't forget watch the Belk Bowl postgame ceremonies click on to ESPN 3 for Ed Cunningham and Dr. Jerry Punch and our entire great crew. This is Mike Patrick saying so long from Charlotte. Now we send you to San Antonio.